Let's go over how to adjust your artwork for bright print, whether you're screen printing into DTF or DTG. We're going to tackle that white base and those overprint colors in the computer in Photoshop. And we're starting right now. Let's go. Let's go over how to make your prints brighter. In this case, increasing the brightness of our white base and our overprint colors. And this worked for screen printing, DTG, DTF, but specifically with screen printing, obviously we're gonna have separate separations for each of our colors. I'm gonna use my set of actions here that I've created. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can grab that up. I'm gonna click this window, proof window, so we have a proof, a way to compare our original art to, which is over here to the left. Over here to the right is our artwork that we're going to separate. Now, we'll just click on Start Action Steps, and what that's going to do is break it down into all the different colors. And I'll show you how to, now that it's all finished, I'll show you how to make this look exactly like the proof on the left. One of the first things I would do, so we'll, we'll come over to Channels, you can see that we have all of our separations. We've got our white base. Oh, we've got a t-shirt color, so you can see how all this appears. We have a red, a blue, lemon yellow, purple, green, turquoise. We've got a gray, and then a highlight white. And this will just take some quick adjustments, and I know this will be helpful for y'all out there as well. If you've kind of started your separations already and then are diving in you're like hey how do i make this look nice how do i make this even brighter so the the first thing i'm going to do we do have black in this graphic here i'm i've got this window right here called info we can go up the window and select info and this will tell us a lot so say for example if i come over to this other document our proof window if i scroll over this black we can see right here that it's not 100% black. So when I do go to create a black, what's going to end up happening is it's not gonna be 100% black, but I'll show you how to adjust that. So I've got an action here to create a black. And you can see if we're using our info palette here, we scroll over that, see it's the same thing, 78%. So what we could do is go up to image adjustments and levels. We'll take this little black selector and what this is going to do is make whatever I select 100% black. So we'll select that and we'll hit OK. Now when you're doing separations obviously we're looking at this like film, right? S specifically for screen printing that's going to block 100% of the light, get 100% of that ink flowing through that screen. Now we've got our black created Let's say this is going on a, a gray shirt. So we'll double click on that, make our t-shirt color gray, and we'll hit OK. So one of the first things, aside from adding that additional black in there, is looking at this graphic, I mean, these actions I developed to work with simulator process, but they also work with simple spot colors. But with spot colors, we're really going to need to pump that white base up. So we'll come here to, and moving forward, rather than me going to image mode and levels to adjust things, I've just got a quick little action here to pull that up. So it's called adjust color right here. We'll click on that and we have our white base selected. And we're going to make this white base as bright of a white as we possibly can. We'll play around with some of these sliders until we've got all this stuff filled in. It's starting to fill in the black, but that's okay. We don't want a white base underneath our black. We'll hit okay for now, and we can select our black channel or separation here by holding down command. If you're on a PC, I believe it's option, and we'll select that. We'll come over to our white base, and I'm gonna hit D on the keyboard. If you look over here to the left where our palettes are, our color palettes, if I hit D, it will revert it back to the default colors. In this case, I wanna fill this with white just to make sure that there is no black in there. So if we're looking at this 
black K, and I scroll over it, and we've got 17%, which is no bueno. So we'll go ahead and we'll fill that in with white, and we're good to go there. We could fill some of this in a little bit more because it does look like we have 89%. So we'll come to adjust color one more time. Take our black selector. There we go. Now, every all of this color here is being backed up by 100% white. So we can turn our, our black on. We'll turn our t-shirt color on. We're looking pretty good there. In this case, I, we will need some red for our orange. So that's another color. This blue, I don't think we need. Um, in this particular case, because this color is a little bit closer towards uh, towards turquoise that's the color that where all that blue is is going to be so we can throw this blue in the garbage we do have a lemon yellow purple uh, really not able to use so looking at the names lemon yellow and purple those are default CMYK CMYK colors it can cause some issues if it were named magenta and just plain old yellow so we we'll kind of have to change those up a little bit green we do have a green gray we really don't have a gray so we can throw that one away um you, you could do without using this highlight white but if i really wanted to make the bottom of the star a, a bright white i would include a highlight white let's go back and we'll adjust all these really quick our red is being used for this orange However, it does look like some of that red's going into this magenta area. We'll select this purple, come over to red, and we'll fill that with white. Let's take a look at that in action. So we'll fill that with white so we don't have any of that red there. Let's do that one more time. I see what's going on. Our purple isn't 100%. So let's go ahead and we'll adjust that real quick. Take our black selector. Make that 100%. Now we can select it, come over to our red, and we'll just fill that with white. Now we should be all good to go there. If we turn on our white base and our purple, technically, which is magenta, there we go. We've got that all situated. Now, if I wanted to really select these colors here, make it, you know, make it as close as, as we can. Uh, we can take our eyedropper here and select that color. And we're going to do this for the rest of the colors too. And here's our color number that we'll plug in. Now if we wanted to use a specific Pantone color, we would just choose color libraries. And then that's the number right there, 219C. But we'll use the picker for now and assume that we're using off-the-shelf colors. In which case you would just choose something as close to what you're visually seeing here. So we'll copy that number. We'll hit cancel. We'll come back over here. We'll come to our purple. We'll double click on that and then change our spot color to that new color, which, you know, wasn't too far off to begin with. We've got our purple taken care of. Our lemon yellow looks like we're pretty close there. Let's make sure that it is 100% down here, which it doesn't look like we are. And that is because if we go over to our artwork, it is 93% yellow, but in my opinion, I would just make that a solid fill. So we'll come over to our lemon yellow, adjust color. Again, this is just a quick little action to pull up, going to image adjustments and levels. So we're just going to keep using this quick little action to make things a little faster. So we'll make that 100% yellow. Let's take a look at our purple. We already fixed that. Our green. Now we could make this green here instead of this green. We can make it the green over here in our client's artwork. So we'll select that. We'll take that color number. We'll copy it. Come over here to our green. We'll paste that in there so it looks more like a lime green. Now you notice this little error right here. It's got this little, and what that means is that it's RGB, in which we can't print RGB. RGB is light, so 
when we're doing print and it doesn't matter the process, screen printing, DTF, DTG, we can only make it so bright, right? Like with screen printing, we can use fluorescent colors and all that jazz, but we're not gonna make it as bright as RGB. If I had a client come to me and, and their art was completely RGB and I had to tell them it's not gonna work because you're looking at light that is impossible to print. This, this is, these are monitor colors and it's not going to happen. So here's, here's the brightest inks that we have. So keep that in mind. But we'll, we'll push forward in, in a way to use colors that will actually print. You can just click on that little error sign up here and it will give you the, the number that's actually achievable to print. So we'll hit OK. We'll change that and we'll come back to our Adjust Color action. We'll select the very top of this artwork because that's where it looks like it's brightest. We'll make that 100% black. We'll come down to our turquoise. We'll do the same thing and adjust color. Take our little black selector, select that. We'll hit OK. Uh, let's come over here and grab that blue. Make sure we're using the same blue. Uh, it does pretty much look like, eh, looking at our CMYK here, it's got quite a bit of cyan, a little bit of magenta, but we'll grab that color and we'll paste that in here. So this is a, a very useful tool, this info tells you what CMYK mixes in there. We'll hit OK. Last but not least, our highlight white. We don't want any of our highlight white going into that blue. It's basically trying to pull some of that blue down so it's it looks more like what's going on over here. But we'll pull that out. It gives you some wiggle room to rather than not having enough white to pull it back. That's pretty much how I've set it up. So we'll come to adjust color. We'll take our white selector. We'll hit that real quick. And we'll make sure down here at the bottom that is 100% black. In other words, 100% white. We turn all this on and we're, we're all finished. We could send this over to our rip, put it onto some screens, or if you are doing DTF or DTG or anything like that, you know, there's your, your white base ready to go. I think the only other adjustment I would do here is I would spread some of these colors like this uh, purple or magenta, but we're calling it purple. And I've got a quick little action here that's spread by one pixel, which is basically if we went up to select and we went to let me pull up that uh, selection. I'll hold command, select that little purple thumbnail, select, modify, expand, expand by one. Um, something I probably should have brought up at the beginning of this is we do want to make sure our artwork is 300 DPI at full print size. So if we go to image, image size, uh, it is 12.7 inches wide, which is great because it'll be a good size print. So we spread that, right? And then we'll just fill the, the purple here. This outer edge with some, some black. So we'll go ahead and hit D on the keyboard to reset to our default colors. And looking at this, we do have some of that purple and some of these other colors in which we could Go to adjust color, take our white selector, pull that out, make sure we don't have any of that in there. And I'm gonna show you just a demonstration real quick of expanding this blue. So we can see that we expanded that purple into this black, right? So none of our white's gonna be showing through. We could do the same thing with this blue. There we go, turquoise, and we'll just call it sky blue so it's not confu confusing. There we go, and we can hit spread color by one pixel, and it did it automatically like that. So 
now it's spread by one pixel and we could take this to press and everything would look great i hope this tutorial was helpful in making your white base brighter along with your overprint colors let me know down in the comments if this helped out and what you would like to see that would help you with your your artwork or screen printing whatever the case may be and i'll see you in the next video